working on an old Mary beam engine. This is part two of a compilation video showing how I got this Mary beam engine to run very well. By moving the slide valve into the correct position and setting the eccentric sheave timing on the crankshaft. There is a knocking sound coming from the engine. This was traced to a loose crank pin and a missing cotter pin from the Watts parallel motion. Here you see the slide valve correctly set, uncovering the steam ports the same amount at each end. And while on the subject of the steam chest, this was the steam inlet pipe. It was no good at all, it was soft soldered and it had broken off anyway. This was clearly no good so I decided to modify the existing inlet valve. I did this by drilling the assembly underneath and tapping it quarter by 40. This will take a commercial union and this will give a much more secure steam or air inlet to the engine. So once this slight modification was complete, it was a simple job to re-bolt the steam chest cover in place using all these very tiny 8BA bolts. And here, if you look underneath the steam inlet governor valve, you will see a commercial quarter by 40 union. The timing's more or less okay. There's a nasty clunk I'm not too thrilled with, but I haven't really had much time to look at that yet. Progress has been made, at least it runs, which is more than it did last week. I've slowed down the video to see if I can find out where this clunk is coming from just by looking at the video, but no, it's not that simple. The engineering standard really is very good on this engine. The flywheel is very true, no shake or wobble, and there isn't much play in any of the parts. Here I'm checking where the admission of the steam takes place, and it's within tolerances, but at the moment it is not 100% where it should be. At least it runs now, which it didn't last week, and it runs really well, to be perfectly honest. It's just this clunk's driving me nuts. So after I've phoned the Samaritans for some support, I will continue with the video series. As you can see here, I'm using a pair of pliers to check whether there's any play in the crank pin. And indeed the crank pin is loose. These pliers do not have a serrated edge to the gripping surface, that would mark the work. The gripping surface is perfectly smooth. And I'm also using the pliers here for knocking out the cotter pin. Here is a diagram of how a steam engine cotter pin system works. It's a great system, very simple, and it holds the brasses in place. But unfortunately, on model sizes, the cotter pins generally fall out. If you look on the diagram, you will see that it shows a set screw which holds the larger of the two cotters in place. That's fine on the full size, but it's not too good on a very tiny steam engine. The boat would either have to be unfeasibly small or very large and overscale. With the connecting rod moved out of the way, spinning the flywheel shows there is no real problem. Nothing is clunking, it's running very smoothly. As you can see on screen at the moment, there's some side play on the crankshaft, and also the top cap of the inner bearing is a bit loose. This of course won't help with the knocking problem, but I don't think in this case it's side play on the crankshaft that's the problem, and I can confirm this by putting my finger on the end of the crankshaft to take up the side play, and it makes no difference. This is the Watts parallel motion end of the beam, and as you can see it's very loose, and it's very loose because one of the cotter pins is missing altogether. The larger of the two cotters has completely disappeared, and this allows everything to flop about at one side. This is where the knocking effect is coming from. So it's time to make a new taper cotter to replace the one that's missing. It's a simple sawing and filing job. And when it's fitted, we'll see what happens. So as you can hear now, the engine sounds much better, much healthier all round. If you are using an engine with taper cotters, never put the taper cotters in with any Loctite products like 601 or 603 bearing retainer. It's okay to use a little bit of thread lock, but that's all. If you do use the high strength bearing retainer, you will not be able to successfully adjust the cotter pins without applying heat. Whilst watching this engine turn over, I noticed that there is the slightest, and I mean the very slightest, amount of error in the valve setting. It's very easy to go into obsess mode when doing this, and getting it just right. I will only do this if the engine is very well made. I don't like doing it when I'm compensating for bad manufacture, 
but in this case the engine's very well made and it's just the icing on the cake. But what I'm going to do first is purposely do it wrong so you can hear how bad the engine sounds when the timing is out. This is with late timing so all the metal parts go to the full extent of their travel before the steam is admitted. By moving the position of the eccentric relative to where the crank pin is on the crankshaft, the valve timing can be changed. A word of warning, I'm carrying out this procedure with a very small amount of compressed air being applied to the engine. By doing it this way I can tell at which point of the revolution the engine is admitting the steam. But I'm only using about 4 to 5 psi. Any more than that and this would be a very dangerous operation. There's still a slight way to go on this to make it how I want it, but I'll do that when the camera's not on because it takes quite a long time. I'm using a Mammoth style drive belt which will drive the governor. When cutting these belts make sure you cut the open end, not the fancy shaped end. Here's the belt fitted to the governor drive. I've got the tension right because it's going round OK. The only problem now is when it's going fast the governor actually hits the columns but that won't happen once I've made the governor linkages connecting the governor to the governor valve. The big end cotter pin is still slightly slack so I tap it very gently with the hammer and now we go to warp speed. You can both see and hear what's happening when I let go of the governor lever. The good news is none of the cotters fell out and everything's running rather well. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.